have we done everything? We did that, 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 we did that. Okay, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and today's video is going to be another will I buy it, chatting about new releases, whether I'm gonna be picking them up or not so much. As always, I could not possibly even fathom thinking about making one of these videos without crediting these incredible Instagram accounts. This is where I get all of my information from. Most of the photos that I use in my videos and lots of people use in these videos come initially from these accounts because they are always first with their red hot piping makeup tea. So if I were you, I'd get following them. So let's jump straight into this with both feet, shall we? Why not? Sorry, I've had four coffees today, so <laughs> expect the unexpected. So first up, let's talk about this YSL Rouge Volupte Candy Glaze launch of lippies that is incoming any moment. These are expected to launch in the next month or so, around the middle of January, first couple of weeks of January. These <laughs> look right up my street. I feel like Yves Saint Laurent makes incredible lipstick formulas. A lot of my favorite formulas come from the brand. I also feel like they're quite underrated. Does anyone else feel that way? Maybe at one time, lots of people were talking about them. I think they've kind of been forgotten about and they are some of the best lipsticks out there. These look right up my street, that juicy. It's described as being syrup-like with a hybrid finish, moisturizing, burst of color and a glossy finish. I mean, this is just ticking all of my boxes, especially for like spring. I love a juicy lip for spring. Looking at these shades, I can already see like six that I need. The top two left and the whole bottom row. So, good job my birthday's around that time, isn't it? Next up, this Too Faced Too Femme palette. I mean, there is a whole collection, but I feel like the palette's the only thing that I can quite frankly muster the energy to talk about. I, do, I keep on including Too Faced in these videos because I think one day there's going to be something that tickles my pickle, that floats my boat, but today is not going to be that day. This is just my nightmare, my nightmare. I don't understand the colour story, but let me know if you do. If you see this palette and you are like in love, please let me know because I, you know, I like to learn you know, I'm just looking at this and thinking, I don't understand, what is that like random, really light chalky looking turquoise thing in there? I don't understand that. I don't understand the slightly larger brown matte pan. Um, I don't really understand how any of these colors kind of make a full cohesive look, but you guys know me, I am very basic when it comes to eyeshadow. And maybe someone who's super into color looks at this and sees all their dreams come true. But all I can see is a, a nightmare in palette form. Other than I hit the front of that palette is beautiful. The butterflies, the color, it's very, very pretty. But inside is like a hard pass from me. Next up, let's talk about these Tom Ford quads, Lava Luster and Metal Lust. Nice little names there. These have been floating around, photographs of these have been floating around for like the entire year. And Chic Profile Official, the amazing Tavia on Instagram, she's been doing the digging and trying to find out the tea because apparently these were supposed to launch like two months ago and they're only just now arriving. So the Lava Luster, that is now available on Selfridges and in store. Now Tavia actually went in store and asked them what's going on with Metal Lust. And they said it's basically been delayed, this shipment's been delayed, but it's coming. So so for me, the Lava Luster palette looks gorgeous, but to, is it a palette or is it? Well, it's a palette of pops, isn't it? If we're talking Charlotte Tilbury language, that's a palette of pops. And so that's going to be a pass for me. The formula looks stunning. I think all the shades and how it swatches looks gorgeous. And again, Tavia has some posts on her Instagram showing it in use and it looks stunning. Brand new formula, very reflective, like high shine, love it but it's just not my shade. It's very coppery and that's like not 
my kind of colours, but Metal Lust, I'm hanging in for that one. This one looks like a like a cohesive quad to me. It's got looks like it's got some like light and shade when it comes to mattes versus shimmers. It looks like it can do a whole cohesive look without needing to pull from other palettes. It's got that same exciting new shimmer formula, and I like the colour story. I've been waiting for a Tom Ford quad that would tickle my pickle and get my heart racing, and here it is at last. So it's a it's a skip one, buy one situation. A 50-50. A win some, lose some situation. Next up, the Givenchy Sparkling Love Collectione. As part of my promise to myself that I'm going to be a little bit more open-minded when it comes to brands and when it comes to products, I am trying to keep an open mind about these loose powdered, powdered blushes. In my mind, it's hell on earth. All I can see is a cloud of coloured smoke all over the place and it, breathing it in all over my desk. I feel it's going to stain. I don't have carpet in my bedroom, it's, it's wooden flooring, but if I did, I feel it's going to stain my carpet, even though I don't have one. That's my, that's my fear. That's, that's why I can't get on board with those. But maybe it's time I change my mind. I've heard great things about the loose highlighter. Maybe I should try this. The lip products look so pretty and beautiful. Givenchy is a brand I'm not very familiar with. I'm not often drawn to picking up their products. These lipsticks look gorgeous, very pretty, but is it all packaging and no substance? That's my question. I'm a little on the fence if you can't tell. A little on the fence. It may be a wait for review, probably. Next up, let's talk about this Vizier Paris Etoile little palette, little mini mini doodle, little little doodle palette. I don't know what's happening either. Do you? This is so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this colour story. It's not so much a me colour story, but I absolutely appreciate it. Does that make sense? Like, there's some colour stories where I look at it, like the Too Faced palette where I'm like I can't see the vision guys I'm trying to trust the process but I, I can't see it this I, I see it I see this on people who like a dark do you know who the, who would rock this is Angelica Nickvist this would be I can see it on her in my mind's eye it would be, be stunning people who are into a really like vibrant colorful even like a grungier deeper darker eyeshadow look I think will rock this. I also think it kind of looks a little versatile as well for such a small palette, it's quite dark. There are some shades in there that I think you could pair those together softly and get a great daytime look. But for me, it's just not my colors, it's not my type of palette, but I really appreciate it. And I think the color story is gorgeous, stunning, and something different, which is always nice, but it's just not for me. Moving on, let's talk about these Wayne Goss surprise bags. Is this the first time, I don't remember these being a thing last year. Is this the first one someone tell me? I mean, I'm gonna have to wait for your comment. You can't answer me, obviously, because you're not here, are you? Hopefully not. I don't remember these from last year. I, I when I first saw these, I thought, I'm not a surprise anything kind of person, not a surprise party, not a surprise package, not a surprise bag, mystery box kind of girl. I'm just, I'm, I'm not. I like to know what I'm buying with my money and these types of products, they're not cheap. I feel like you're really living on the edge. If you're someone who loves these and you're really, you're living on the edge. You go, girl. You go. You're clearly fearless and would potentially wrestle a bear, presumably, for fun, because that's how risky you are. But I'm, I'm not that girl. I'm, I don't love a risk. I don't really love it. I just want to know, here's my £100 and that's what's coming. I don't want it to turn up and find I've already got half of it and actually don't like the other half. I'd just rather buy what I know I, I want 
you know? I know a lot of people were disappointed because there were no brushes gonna be included in these surprise bags, but what I do like is that that was very transparent. I feel like if Wayne had just decided he wasn't gonna include his brushes and then sent these out, people would have been up in arms and outraged. And I know people were disappointed and would have purchased them if they'd included brushes, but I do like it was very clear and very transparent there were not gonna be any brushes in here. I also like that he gave the options for skin tones, which to me was definitely a big hint that there was gonna be bronzers in there. I guess that could also apply to his blush and highlight pack duos, but for me, I felt like that was gonna mean that there was a bronzer in there. Obviously, Wayne has a lot of makeup now. You know, he has blush highlight duos, he has his bronzer duos, he has a mascara, he has multiple eyeshadow palettes. So there is a lot of other stuff that could be in there, but I just wanna know what I'm getting. I can't lie to you, I want to know what's in there and you're not taking my money on a surprise and a wing and a prayer, okay? That is not how I roll, no, no. Next up, let's talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. <gasps> I am excited about this one. I'm excited about this one. And it takes a lot to get me excited these days because we've kind of seen it all at this point, pretty much seen it all, a lot of it. We've seen most of it. This got me excited. When I saw this picture flash up on Trend Mood, <gasps> I mean, anything from Charlotte Tilbury pretty much gets me excited. That brand is just like, it's a brand that resonates with me. I'm drawn to, I love most of their products that I've tried become favorites of mine. I just feel like their aesthetic is my aesthetic. I'm their target market for sure. Everything they make appeals to me. So it's pretty much normal for me to see a product that's coming that's new from them and get excited about it. And a foundation from Charlotte Tilbury, oh yes, because I just love how she does her skin. I love that glowy, luminous, lit from within, natural look that she goes for with her skin, with her models, and I just think this is going to be, I have high hopes. I don't know it's what, what it's gonna be. I have no idea, in fact, but I hope it's going to be glorious, and it sounds right up my street. So it's a medium coverage, instant glow, Infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid, improve the look of skin every time you wear it. I'm not so sure about that. Skin looks radiant, plump and smooth. Sign me up. This is reminding me, you know that TikTok where they like down their credit card? That's what I'm doing. I'm ready. Give me the goods. Sign me up. Sign me straight up. I'm jumping around on my list here and that seems like it's going to be a terrible mistake. But next up, let's talk about Kiali Juicy Apple. Ooh, this is a new fragrance from Kiali, which is Huda Beauty's perfume branch, if you will. I, I believe it's actually owned or managed by her sister, by Huda's sister, and uh, not Huda herself, it's kind of her sister's baby and I've heard some great things I've ha heard some good things I've not tried any of the fragrances myself but I have heard good things this is not my type of fragrance however I love the packaging I think it's really pretty I love the red gorgeous but yeah these notes are just a no from me it's I mean it's described as a fl fluty fluty I mean, who wants a fluty perfume? Not me. A fruity, floral, and deliciously sweet. Mm. Fusion of crisp and juicy red apples, sweet berries, and fresh floral notes. There's at least six words in there that are instant no's from me when it comes to perfume. And that's just a, a me, totally per personal preference when it comes to fragrance. Obviously, fragrance is so subjective. We know what we like, and I do not like <laughs> fruity, floral, and deliciously sweet perfumes that is like the opposite of what I want I do like an apple note there's a couple of notes in there I like you know musk sugared moss is, is a nice one amber vanilla but the entire top and middle are all notes that I try to avoid you know rose very floral very fruity and mm, not for me. Next up, these Fenty liquid highlights again this is one where I'm kind of on the fence it's a liquid not really about that life that's number one, you guys already knew that. But I did, I mean, one of Fenty's little powder duo highlights, I can't, oh, um, Afternoon Snack and Mo Honey. It's in there somewhere. The lights are on, but is anybody home? That was one of my favorite highlights for a very long time. I'm almost, I've almost hit pan. 
in fact. On the more natural side of those highlights, they have a kind of softer side and a really quite glittery side, and I only use the softer side, and I loved it for a very long time. It was one of my absolute favorites. I know Fenty can do a highlight. My problem is that a lot of the time they go for the glittery option, the chunkier option, the more shimmery, glittier, op glittier? What is going on today? The more shimmery, glitterier, more glittery, however you would like to speak, if, if you can at all, in fact. That's kind of where they, they tend to go down that route more often than not, I find, rather than the softer, more natural side that I prefer in their duo pans. The Killer Watt highlight, that is definitely not for me. You know, it's a lot of sparkle, the lava luster body stuff, that was like stuff of nightmares for me. I don't know which way this is gonna sway. I'm looking really closely at the photos. It looks like some of these are a little more shimmery than others. I reckon maybe Hustler Baby would be the shade that I would go for. And that one, I mean, it looks like maybe it could be a little less shimmery. And then I see this picture and think, God, no, that looks like, I don't know what it looks like something for the body and not for the face. So I don't know, this seems to be for the face, but this is absolutely gonna be a wait for review for me. I wanna see proper swatches and I wanna see some reviews before I even go near it because I am, I'm afraid, I'm alarmed. I'm not sure that it's going to be my kind of highlight is what I'm saying. And lastly, but not leastly, I talked about these in a previous video, but now we have the full information on these Lisa Eldridge liquid shadows. So these are called the Liquid Lurex Eyeshadow. Lisa uploaded a video some number of days ago. <laughs> who knows what day it is, and she swatched all of them and also talked us through the names and showed us how to apply them. As I said in a previous Will I Buy It video, I'm all over these. These aren't even really my type of thing, but Lisa is my type of thing. I mean, she's not a thing. She's a, a human lady. She's my type of woman is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so now that we've seen all of the colors, I think I'm pretty much decided as to which ones I'm going to be going for. So from top to bottom here, we have Bianca, Angelica, Lauren, Diana and Liza. So the ones, the shades that I'm drawn to, the ones that I think I will pick up, presuming that I can actually get my mitts on them in the general melee that is Elisa Eldridge launch. So my plan is to pick up Bianca, Angelica and Liza. I'm not sure about Liza. I don't know where I'd wear that. It's like a New Year's Eve only type of shadow for me. I, I wouldn't have thought I'm going to swim in lessons wearing that, but it's different, you know, it's different. And it's something that reminds me of my childhood. So yeah, I might pick that up. I used to have this bourgeois li liquid eyeshadow that is all I wore for like 10 years of my teen life. There's not even 10 years of teen life, but I wore it for quite a long time, is what I'm saying. And I loved it and it reminds me of that. So I think I might pick up that shade, but I might have a last minute back out when I realize I'll never wear it and it's probably pointless. But I wanna try a few of these for you guys for a video. Bianca and Angelica, they look right up my street. They look super pretty, very easy one and done shadows. Very intrigued about this formula. So that's my plan. Bianca and Angelica absolutely coming home with me. Liza may or may not fall into my cart depending on my mood on the day. So there you have it. Those are all the new or upcoming makeup releases that I'm either excited and hyped for or absolutely am not. <laughs> As always, please share your thoughts on these products and these collections in the comment section down below. I love to hear whether I've got an unpopular opinion or whether you guys agree with me and what you think about these products and collections and what you're excited for because we are all so different and I love that about us. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye.